Hey guys, it's Malfunction here again from the narrative. Um, once again, talking about my comics this week. Um, well, I just received a whole bunch of, um, you know, a package this week, basically, uh, that's been accumulating from an online uh, auctions over about two months or so. And because I've been waiting, you know, sort of buying on and off with, um, uh, with, um, with a seller who I know because I bought from him previously and who I trust and who looks after, uh, you know, who I, who I bought a bit of and who I trust with the fact that like, you know, he can, he will hold the comics and I'll pay for it all together and such, uh, or I'll pay it as I go along. It just depends if I forget or not, but, um, he's really, he's been really cool. So send me, I was just about to, I don't usually jump on, on the auction site all the time so i'm sometimes i'm not on there for a week or two and then i go oh that's right let's go check that out and so that sort of puts me in kind of in you know back you know sort of on the back burner when it comes to what i'm what i've paid for what i haven't paid for so um i usually allow a couple of weeks for other people to deal with that with myself as well if i'm selling something or usually i just say hey or if i'm buying something it's, it's all right two weeks is fine i'm okay with that but, um, so yeah, so I only had a, like a small amount to pay for this, I think in the end, because there was quite a few comics in here and I think there was two left to pay. And so let's have a look at this. And I'm hope, like, like I say, always, I don't know, I don't remember what I bought and I don't like to go and look at what I bought because I like the surprise of seeing what I did buy. And I don't even remember how much I paid for it sometimes because at the time I'm just like using, you know, pocket money that I have and you know that i'm put aside just for this um because i see i see as much as i see it as a hobby i also see comics as an investment because someday you know we never know what will what the cost you know how the price will go up because in the past i've made two big blunders that are you know in the way of like first issue or first appearance comics that we have really regretted very much and there's been a 10 year difference between them, if I remember right. Maybe a five year difference between them, close to. But yeah, and both times, of course, uh, yeah, so both times I've kind of like, I'm not gonna do that ever again. And so if I have, you know, if I have some money saved up, I will see what's available and I'll do my research and I'll find out what's there and I'll, you know, I figured out. So, as I said, the, he looks it up for me really well, and you know, it's got here. Um, hey, I uh, hope you enjoy. Enjoy, uh, love that Venom number seventeen cover. Um, regards and thanks for the trades. You know, yeah. So let's have a look. Like I always say, if you're sending up package, make sure it's sent up properly. You know, uh, because. You don't know who's handling it out there. Um, you know, I've seen some crazy, crazy stuff overseas. I've seen some crazy stuff local, not locally here, but I mean, in New Zealand with, um, you know, delivery people and stuff like that. And, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, someone is having a bad day handling your goods, you know, they shouldn't be in the job. <laughs> if, you know, if they're doing pages like that, but all, one of the amazing things about my courier drivers, they knock on the door, go, hey, I hear them if, if I'm not sleeping. I can't think of, thank you so much. I really appreciate it, you know, because I do. I appreciate these things are having a good nick. And so I'm like, so these ones here, I don't know how many comics are in actually in this package. You can see he's, he's double bit, um, double cardboarded, right? So I've got one there to make sure the back and the front is done, right? And then the sides of these put access. So if it gets hit, it's going to bend. Plus, he's put another layer on. All right. So, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I like, I like, this, like, I've, you know, I'm, I'm on a site and um, here I call it NZCNC, which is New Zealand Comics and Collectibles Group, which is a really cool, cool place of a whole bunch of, you know, about two thousand collectors and stuff. And so, you know, we have some good. <laughs> Good stuff going on there, um, discussions and stuff. And of course, 
as you know, I love comics, and I, you know, I love old school comics. I even like some modern comics, but I think right now the only comics I love is manga, right? <laughs> and um, I'll, and it's, you know, it's because I can just pick it up and I don't have to worry about anything. I can just enjoy and just read it, or I'll watch an anime and I'll, you know, I'll look for the manga for it and enjoy that. So let's have a look at what we got here. Like I said, a lot of cardboard, always send a well packaged, doesn't take much. So there's about six, five to six issues in here by the looks of it. Let's have a look what we got. Oh, more, more so tape. So it's packaged inside another package. So it's got, it's all gathered together in a, a binder, binder file? I know what you call it, binder file. Um, you know, like this sort of stuff. So it's, in, it's in a big one of those. So it's bag and bones, and then you also put it on that just to make sure it doesn't get bent. And I'm, I'm trying myself not to bend it while I'm trying to tear away the plastic. I don't think I should tear away the plastic. Just cut it. Right. <laughs> Last week I was doing a video and um, and I was doing this, and I didn't realize until way later that I'd actually cut my hand. And um, yeah, I didn't even know I cut my hand, and because I, you know, because of my, you know, because of my, um, what's called, I don't know, some sort of nerve things that I've got. I don't feel pain because I'm always on medication. So let's have a look. Well, okay, I see what. All right, I see what he meant by um, love that Venom Seventeen cover. So let's have a look at that right away. From, excuse me, the Spider-Man, right? Check that out. Isn't that cool? I saw that cover and I was like, yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's uh, that's who's the artist on this? I'm like, it says Scotty Young. I mean, it says Young. So the only Young I know is Scotty Young. So let's have a look. Um, is it inside? Yes, it's not. Brilliant. Okay. So it's got here, and I'm not sure if that's that's what he's saying, but it's got here. It might not even be for this, but it's fine. 2004, so maybe it's not 2004. Maybe it's another one. Oh yeah, yeah. So he's saying it's fine. 2004. I don't know. It looks near mint to me. Oh, I see. So there's a bit of denting going on. So yeah, Scotty Young's a pencil on this. Yep. So it looks cartoonish. It's got a young artwork. Uh, so 2004. So this is, um, I would say this is when Scotty was coming into his own and then moving on to like covers. They realized that, you know, he like not sort of coming into his own, but I think they must have recognized somewhere that his covers, that his humor or whatever it was, that like there's certain things you can just, you know, you, you know, that some people are better at, no matter how many sort of projects they work at, work on and stuff. That something about them, about their style. Hey, Glenn. Cheers, mate. Um, and so you sort of, you know, recognise that skill, and you go, okay, this is where, you, this is where you should be working on, or this is what project I can give to you and that's some, something like with me like I will because of several projects I work for this thing Blanche Studios right um that I um I have to I get a whole bunch of artists uh that I'm working with specifically right now right uh, five different projects and I was at six and I go well that artist deserves to work on that and that artist on that because I look at their portfolio the things that they sent me, they sent me a couple pages of their work, and I go, hmm, yeah, I think this this person would would be great on that project, and that one, that one, and that one, that one, and the whole thing then is to work with them, and then with you to say, you know, okay, so let's uh, let's have a look at let's develop a you know um, how we deal with this project. Right, so when you got Scotty, you know when you got Scotty Young, he goes up and does um, 
I hate I hate Fairyland, which is kind of humorous, mature reader base because now because I remember that because of somewhere here, right? Um, actually, I will, I'll I'll find it very quickly because I just I was just going through my cataloging just a little while ago, and I saw it and I was like, you know, that's uh, oh man, I didn't even think about bringing it up until just when I saw that, as you know, or when I'm looking at that, so. You know, there's a huge pile of comics here i got to go through. Sorry, guys. Let me just show you what I mean. So, yeah. So, I'm here, like, this is a whole bunch of comics of just basic, um, you know, just this morning, I'd say, because it's about 2 o'clock in the afternoon here now. But this morning, I've been trying to catalogue, because I want to get away with, you know, trying to get everything catalogued soon. Um, but it's been taking it's been taking a slow pro, um, process, because I've doing so many things right <laughs> it, it can become like a headache at times because it all piles up and you guys are basically you know i'm making all these videos here and in, in the middle of it i guess it's just sitting here somewhere right tell me it's just sitting here somewhere uh <laughs> and maybe not and i kind of like go i'll do it later i'll do it later i'll do it later you know um Can't find it. No. Okay, I guess it's not. It doesn't want to be found by me today. It's weird, but it's very strange. I'm sure I just had it right on this pile, one of these piles. But this is what happens, you know, when you have a whole bunch of comics and you don't, you don't um. Basically, you know, basically like that. <laughs> I just got this, um, and I bought, I mean, catalog today, and I, what was it? Yeah, I think it was today or last night. And I've just been able to um, get a catalog, like I said. And I, but I bought it ages ago, like maybe two months ago. And these are like from months of, anyway. So what, I'm, what I was trying to say was that, like, so sometimes you, you know, I'm working with different people, and then, like, Fairyland really took off. I mean, I've got a whole bunch of Scotty, um, Scotty, um, Scotty Young covers. I just like just the just the humor about it. It's just like um, I think you know some things like you know how you go like some things are worth their cover price, and I think for me I've been I've probably got about fifteen to twenty of them. And to tell you why, I thought you know and to show why what I meant by humor and just just a um, animated cartoonish chibi style what do you call it basically cartoonish style humor piece so you can see here uh, it's a Punisher comic and it's basically he's got like nerf guns all right it's like just like toy guns as a kid with toy guns and so there's another one here that I'm just gonna have to hide there because I want to make this video available to all ages so this is i hate fairyland of course this this comic it's actually no let's not worry about it. it's not gonna be this is not gonna be for all ages this is a variant cover uh for um i hate fairyland and it's about a about a young girl who gets lost and uh, somehow gets lost in fairyland right in this um imaginary fantasy world or real world whatever but in a fantastical place and she never grows old well she's about 35 years she's like 20 years she spent there or something like that but her body's still child and it's kind of like uh, something that i've thought about when it comes to like um vampires and stuff and so there's this rule uh that that i've come up with that you never like if i'm writing a vampire story which i kind of am at the moment um because i've always loved like werewolves and vampires for ages and it's just one of you know the, the howling movies are one of my favorites so i'm just kind of glad that i've said it's not for it, this video is going to be for you know not for kids so you know since i love horror movies since i was a young kid like you know, i'm like 13 upwards but i mean I, I just mentioned last week right i mean in the previous video that i watched aliens when i was a real like about 10 or 11 so i kind of like you know don't really get easily scared so 
for me, it's just like a fantasy. It's like, it's not believable. What I find really um, uh, scary is actual real events, real accidents on wars. I find that scary. I find that, you know, something that shouldn't happen. Um, I mean, I don't mind. You know, accidents happen, right? But I mean, actual people doing willful damage to others or to themselves. So, yeah, sort of, it kind of like, especially bullying, I still find that really, even if I watch in a show or something like that, there's some things I find really hard to think uh, to, you know, deal with, even when I'm writing it. Right, even if I'm writing about that subject or whatever, uh, I still kind of like um, find, me, find myself getting teary eyed because I'm like, how do I do this without being exploitive? Right, because I'm trying to tell a story and to get my message through, there's some things I've got to use, um, but not in a way to be exploitive, but actually try to bring some wholesome goodness out of it or some um you know yeah some goodness out of it in the end because that's what story is about you can't you don't want to leave people feeling down at the end of it sure you want them feeling um a tie to it emotionally but you don't want them going away like depressed because i think anything that kind of um, touches you in a way that makes you depressed emotionally, but doesn't actually make you think, how can I do something to help that person? Or go, f you know, something, can I be something, something, right? Can, can I do something good from what I've just learned? And, or, you know, or whether I'm just here for the entertainment. Like, there's all sorts of ways to tell stories. And, you know, and so as a storyteller, I want to be able to tell exciting interesting stories in whatever genre i'm trying to write it so you know so having something you know something's interesting to read like um i hate fairyland right oh i hate fairyland this is a alternative cover right there's a variant cover and you can see the character here it's made out of um it's a play-doh i think it's made out of play-doh uh i don't know who did that but it's pretty cool uh, i'm sorry about the glare on this but you can't really, can't really be helped because I don't want to really want to take it out of the plastic bag. But yeah, so that's Scotty Young. So, you know, so, I mean, even though he's writing and illustrating his own books or other people is illustrating his work uh, in the style that he likes, which is that sort of style. Um, you know, I think there's a one called The Wilds or something like that. And that was pretty cool. Um, I didn't get to finish it. I think I should go back and finish reading that. But yeah, so that's that's one of the books that came through this week right so where are, where are we where are we where are we yeah so yeah so number 17 of venom in a long and winded way right so then so there's a bit more um at the moment i, I think i've realized i've been buying a bit of um so altogether there was four comics it seems here so altogether um it looks like I'm buying Spider-Man and Venom, but there's a really cool one here, right? So before I go to the next one, so I am, this is number three of Venom, Along Came a Spider. And uh, this is, ooh, let's have a look at what year this came out. This is 1996, so this is pretty cool. I don't have to look look anywhere for it because it's already right on the back, tells me. It's a 8.0, right, um, quality, near mint, uh, pretty cool, but I don't know why he kind of gave this one, maybe the pages inside it are a bit, you know, this number 17, he gave that a 6.0, but I don't understand why, it, why that is, but hey, you know, it looks better to, than that to me, so this is um, Death of X, Oh, these, um, so that, that one, sorry. Um, yeah, so that was from 1996. Um, and Venom's, right? It's been around for a while. Um, if I remember right, co-created by, um, 
Todd McFarlane. I might be wrong. Um, if you've been watching my videos, you know that sometimes I forget. I know too, I know a lot of stuff, but I, I forget a lot of stuff because of my head injuries. Okay. Now, um, the other thing, I, I, I've, um, I very much, um, excuse me, I very much uh, like and have liked for a long time um, as the X-23 character, Lara. If I remember, it's Lara. I remember I, um, I kind of got surprised when that came out because there was a, um, I think I mentioned before that, that I actually picked it up for like almost nothing uh, because, oh no, I ordered without knowing what it was about because I was just buying comics at the point um, because I'd just come back into it after like a five year or 10 year of not buying comics. So, um, so I, I said, what is NYX? Um, this is when they first, you know, we're back in, I think it was 2005 or something like that, 2003. And, um, and I was told, oh, doesn't seem like anything. I said, well, just put me down. I'll sub to it. So I got my box and lo and behold, now it's like worth a lot of money. You know, it's some kind of changes. But then I also bought the next lot. And not many people knew about it either. So suddenly, um, you know, 13 years later, it's a big thing. Uh, this character, X-23, of course, the, um, Logan the movie came out. So you, you got to see with the two claws, but there was another, um, you know, so they've basically over, uh, there was another Wolverine's Daughter uh, story, I mean, comics way back in the 90s, which I can't remember exactly what they were called, but you probably understand it. I'll probably put it on the video and say, this is this is the comic I was talking about, right? Um, but yeah, so, and also the, there was another, you know, like I said, there was a wild thing. And so, yeah. Um, and that was kind of like a son. And I read those. I had those comics, but I sold it over time. So this is um, X-23, number two. Um, and I'm not... Goes, Wolverine Goes to Hell. This is from 20... Uh, very fine near Matt, 9.0, 2010. All right. Look at the artwork on that. On the cover. I haven't read this book, so I'll have to find... I'll have to get around to reading it. So I, I don't like the whole idea of her becoming Wolverine. There's only one Wolverine, right? There's one X-23, and she's a great character as X-23. I don't like the swapping of characters because I think the, um, the, um, it diminishes the original, and you never want to diminish it the original character. Yeah, you can make something else of it, but you don't want to give that name to somebody else because by doing that, you're basically taking away, it's like you're taking the mantle off that character and you're giving it to another character. But that's me. I know a lot of people don't think anything of it. But me, I think it's cool because I think, I mean, not cool because I think having X-23 be 23 is the greatest thing for X-23 and for all the readers, who, you know, fans of X-23, right? And I think that's, that's just awesome. So, you know, there's another, so there's a variant here, um, Death of X, uh, variant number 15 from Amazing Spider-Man. This is a Lopez uh, variant. This is such a cool um, cover because you just look at the way she's, um, her face, it's just the attitude. It's just so cool, right? Let me take it out because I think it, it'll look real, I mean, it deserves to just be shown without the plastic on it. I just don't want to damage it either. So you can see the, you know, you can see the awesome attitude she's got there with all those people ready to think. And there's also like, it looks like, um, you know, there's even, um, is it Dakin in front with the other claws? Um, I really, I'm not sure what this, this story is about because you got Dakin. There's a whole bunch of them. <laughs> it looks, it looks like it's like the clones of the clones of the clones. And see, when you start doing that, that also diminishes the, you know, the greatness of the character. So this is the, this is, oh, this is when, um, I think it was Civil War, 
like the, the comic book Civil War, right? Uh, I think that's 2005 or something like that, where um, he was given the um, Iron Claws by um, the Iron Spider sort of set up by Iron Man. I mean, Peter Parker, right? So, yeah, so that's a beautiful, um, be two beautiful um, covers of um, X-23. Is it Lara? I always forget if it's Lara or not. So, yeah, you got that one there. This is number. Uh, oh, gosh. It's in the front. Number 15. Uh, Lopez and Death of X variant. Right. It's such a cool cover. That's why I looked down to, yeah, that would be cool. And then that X Men 3. So, yeah, there's four in this comic book, from what I can tell. I mean, this package. So, yeah. And then the two Venoms. And there's a Scotty Young um, cover as well. I didn't realize this is a Scotty Young and Delgado. I think it's coloring that um, didn't make me look, think it was a Scotty Young. But yeah, there's a Scotty Young cover as well. It's awesome. All right, so that's four comics from, yeah, from a, from a, what, 96 to 2010 to even earlier, so 2010, 2015. So this is, you know, or even later, I should say, but yeah, four awesome comics. Um, no idea. <laughs> um, yeah. Didn't think I'd be talking about Scotty Young or Lara, but that's, you know, X-23. But like I said, you know, having having the mantle on the character that it's meant for is awesome. Taking it away from that is diminishes it. And I think um, it actually destroys the value of the original character. And I think... Um, that's something I'm very careful when I'm thinking about what I'm doing with my characters here, right? And Curtigil and um, Red Dot that I co-created with um, Seven. And so, you know, you kind of look at look at them and you go, I don't want to take anything away from who they are. And I just want to add to them, add to them, add to them. And if I'm going to make something, you know, like them, then I have to make a brand new character. Or I make them a family character, but still has to have their own mantle. Um, I'm not into, like, sort of... Um, something has to majorly happen for a character to be able to... You know, they don't have to... To not... Like, they either don't have... To, they no longer are that character, and you write that character out completely without having to bring them back, right? I don't like the whole idea of killing off characters and bringing them back after a couple of years because that's like uh, what 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 in sales, because those have been in sales for years, is called, um, oh gosh, what is it? It's something, it's like baiting your customer. Switch, yeah, it's a switch. It's a bait, bait and switch. So you basically go, I want to give you this pen, but you know what? But here, this is what you're going to get. This is what you want to buy. This is what I'm showing you that's for sale. But this is what you get, all right? And so that kind of, you know, you, you go away gutted. You're kind of like, oh, I got ripped off. Uh, I remember doing, uh, accidentally doing that one time where somebody wanted to buy um, one book. And while I was packing it away, I accidentally packed the wrong book away because there was two that were showing to them. And so, and I realized later, I said, oh, dang. So I rang the person up and said, hey, uh, you've got this book. Can you, you know, please bring it back and I'll swap it back. I said, no, 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 don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll read that as well. I said, no, no, no. You know, you're free to bring it back and I'll just swap it right away. It's the same price. It's cool. But they were like, no, no, I'm happy with it. And I was like, in one hand, I'm really grateful that they're okay with it. And the other one's like, yeah, you know, it's still now, like seven years later or something. I still remember that as a as a negative thing that happened with me um, that I really don't like, didn't want to happen, but I tried to fix. But there, the customer was happy, but I'm still unhappy about having to have gone through that. And so that's what that's kind of the thing uh, I see with comics when they change, or they try, um, you know, when they change characters, and they, you know, then a couple of years, I mean, they 
kill one character, somebody else comes to take over the mantle, then you know they're going to bring the, they never kill the characters, ever, right? They always bring them back. I learned that, you know, everybody understand, who's been a long-time comic fan understands that because of what happened with Superman. We know the Mansion comics will never kill their favorite characters, the icon characters, right? Right now you're seeing Justice League Trinity dead, right? And, uh, and the death of Justice League. Um, so, you, what, you're going to kill Superman? You're going to kill... Um, you're going to kill this just the league the, your holy uh, you know your holy five is it or something like six i can't remember and then you're going to replace them with all these new young versions of them it's like you're just cheating it why don't you just do good stories with those and leave these other ones that you, on the side to do whatever they're doing on their own right just keep writing the good stories but that's me uh as a writer who who's been a long-time comic book fan and spent three years learning how to be a better writer and um, by going to film school and also spent like four or five years on stage writing short stories, um, stage plays and all that, seeing how, how people react emotionally or how they tie into actual stories that they see in front of them that's being played out, um, you know, um, from stuff for kids to adults, right? And sort of seeing how the audience connects to that and how I see myself connect to stories that I read as a long-time fan and who reads all sorts of comic books, not just superheroes, right? Um, so, yeah. So that's what I got for, to talk about with these four comics, kind of a long-winded talk. But thank you for joining me this week uh, with my new arrivals. Um, next week we'll have something else for you. Um, until then, wherever you are, be well, be safe. Kakite ano. See you next time.